everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome to day two of Summer School 2020. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at rainbow and of course I jumped at the chance to be able to be the lesson provider for this day because I love rainbow everything. But I really wanted to kind of go a little bit different than I normally do. I normally have a lot of rainbow in my designs, either with inking or stamping or coloring. I wanted to do something a little bit different where we're still incorporating the rainbow but we're doing it a little bit more subtly. So I'm going to just be doing it on these paint palettes, which is somewhere you would expect to see a rainbow of color since you usually have multiple colors on the paint palette. So just because it is a rainbow design doesn't mean it has to scream rainbow. So if it's not something that you particularly love, this is a great way to include multiple colors, but really make it look like it's supposed to be an actual rainbow design. To create the three card designs that I'm going to be sharing in today's video, I used the Artist Palette Dynamics and I die cut three of the palettes from natural cardstock. I then used some dark brown ink and used just a tiny bit on my ink blending tool and I added a little bit of ink around the outside edges just to kind of give them a little bit of shading. It just makes them look a little bit less flat. I'm also using a small sponge dauber and I'm doing the same thing on these little pieces of paint that I have also die cut. The die includes seven different shapes of paint, and what I did is I die cut it from seven different colors. That way I can create all seven of these into cards if I really wanted to. And what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of ink to these little paint swatches as well. It's not as easy to see on screen the paint um, actually having the shading on there, but you can definitely see it in real life. And it just gives the little paint pieces a little bit more definition and really brings the overall piece to life once it's finished. So I'm just going to quickly go through and add paint to each of the different colors, getting three of each of the colors to create my palettes. And then once I have all of them inked up, I'm going to start to adhere them to the paint palette. To do that, I just used liquid glue and I'm going to use my little picker upper tool here. It's going to stick right onto these little pieces of paper. And I'm just going to lift each one one at a time and add a little dab of glue underneath and then just place it back down onto the palette. I decided to keep all of my palettes exactly the same, so I started with the pink and made my way to the purple, but you could change it up and have purple be your starting color, or you could go completely crazy and go out of rainbow order. I don't think I would recommend that just because I love everything being in rainbow order, but you can create it however you prefer. And if rainbows aren't your thing, and even with the paint palette, you don't want to have a rainbow design, you could definitely just add the colors that you prefer onto your palette and make it any color that you want. And of course, if I can think of a way to add sparkle and glitter to a card, I'm probably going to do it. So what I decided to do is take my clear glitter marker, and I'm just very carefully coloring over each of the little paint pieces. I'm trying to be careful not to go off the edges because sometimes the glitter markers can pick up ink that's underneath and I don't want to have any of the ink that I added to the paint palettes kind of go onto that natural color of the palette underneath. Once I have the palettes done, I'm going to go ahead and let those sit and dry so that that sparkle marker can dry on the little paint pieces and I'm going to do my little paint brushes here. So I added a little bit of ink to the handles first just to give them a little bit of depth and definition. And now I'm going to add a little touch of glue to the top area so I can add on the little part here and I cannot remember the name of this but I know there is an actual name. But I decided to cut it out of silver sparkle cardstock. And then I'm using a pencil crayon here to add some kind of line strokes onto the paintbrush area just to make it look a little bit more realistic. I'm not going super far down on the paint bristles just because I am going to cover these up in a minute. You'll see that in just a second here. And I will zoom in the camera now so you can kind of see a little bit closer what using that little pencil did. It's not a lot of detail, but it adds just enough to really give them a more realistic feel. The Artist Palette Dynamics also includes just the bristle part of the paintbrush. So what I did is I cut it out of three of the colors that I use for the paint. And I used my scissors to kind of cut an irregular edge on the little piece of paint there. I didn't want to fully cover the bristles with the color. I thought it would look a little bit more fun to look, make it look like the paintbrushes had been dipped in the paint. So once I had them cut down just a bit there, I used the same liquid glue and added them onto the ends of my paintbrush. And then I'm going to take that same glitter marker and I'm going to very carefully go over each of these little paintbrushes to add the glitter to this paint as well, just so that it will completely match the paint that we've added to the palettes. And then once I have that done, we can go ahead and stamp out our sentiment so that we can start to assemble our cards. Since the focus of today's card is a rainbow theme, I decided to use the Rainbow Greeting Sentiment Stamp Set 
and I'm going to stamp out the same sentiment for all three of the card designs. I'm using my anti-static powder bag to take away any static on my cardstock since I don't want the embossing powder to stick anywhere but where I'm stamping the sentiment. And then I'm using my Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink, and I'm stamping the sentiment three times onto this cardstock. I will then cover all three of these stamped sentiments with white embossing powder, and I'll heat set it with my heat tool to fully set those different sentiments. And then I will just use a paper trimmer, and I'm going to trim these into some skinny strips. I wanted to have them as skinny as possible, so I find that sometimes using a paper trimmer really gives you control on how big your sentiment strips are when they're finished. Okay, so now that we have all of our pieces ready to go, it's time to start to assemble the cards. So I'm using foam adhesive on the back of the paint palettes to add a little bit of dimension to the card. And I'm going to change up the design just slightly on each of these. I'm using all of the same components on each of the card designs, but thought it would be fun to change them up just a little bit. So for the first one here, I have the paint palette kind of on an angle, and I'm adding the sentiment strip directly over top. I made sure to put some foam adhesive on the end of that sentiment strip since it is overlapping. I want it to be the same height as the finished palette. I like to use a T-square ruler to make sure I have the sentiment strip lined up straight. And now I'm going to use a liquid glue pen and I'm going to adhere the paintbrush onto the card panel as well. Since I did the paint palette at kind of an angle, I thought it would look fun to have the paintbrush that way as well. And then I moved on to the other two designs. For this one here, I have the paint palette more straight across the card with the sentiment strip layered over top once again, and then I positioned the paintbrush underneath in a straight line. The third one, which I don't show on film, is the exact same as this one here, except I put the paint palette at the bottom of the card base and I put the paintbrush at the top. So now I have three different card designs that are very similar, but we've just changed up the design just a little bit to change them up. For the card bases, I'm using the same color of cardstock that I used on the paint brush. So I have a Razzleberry, a Limelight, and a Grape Jelly card base. And each of the card bases measure four and a quarter inches square. And my white panels all measure four inches square. That way they have a nice little border around them and everything fits perfectly on top. The last thing I'm going to do to finish off my cards is I'm taking some clear glaze and I'm adding it on top of each of the little paint swatches. This is going to create a really fun glossy look to my paint and give them a raised appearance, which I think just adds to the overall realistic look of the card designs. And once I have that done, we have finished three different cards and we have included rainbows on the cards, but we went a little bit more subtle with the rainbow colors by including them on a design where it makes sense since you would definitely see all of these different colors on the paint palette. I hope today's video gave you some ideas on ways that you can incorporate rainbows into your card designs. Make sure to do today's homework and create a card with your interpretation of rainbows on the design, and you can link it up in the blog post, which is in the video description below. Also make sure to check out the description below for all of the details on the giveaways that we're offering this week for summer school. As always, I appreciate you being here, and I hope to see you tomorrow for another day of summer school fun. Thanks so much for watching.